All praise to the most high God. So tonight's topic is called Seal My Disciples. Seal My Disciples. That's tonight's topic. All right. Seal My Disciples. Um, let's open up with the book of Revelation 7 verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 1. Come on. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Read. Holding the four winds of the earth. Mm -hmm. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. So now, this is John the Revelator on the island of Patmos. The Lord is revealing a lot of mysteries unto John, our forefather, our brother. Okay, watch this. Read that again, verse 1. Revelation chapter four, chapter 7, verse 1. Mm -hmm. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, mm -hmm. holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. So now, watch this. He was on the island of Patmos. Give me Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Okay, this is around 96 AD. Okay, read that. Revelation 1, verse 9. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Go ahead. I, John, who also am your brother mm -hmm. and companion in tribulation. In what? And companion in tribulation. He says he's our companion in tribulation, meaning the atrocities that we're going, we're going through right now. They, our forefathers, they went through these things during the time of Rome. Go ahead. And in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Read was in the isle that was called Patmos mm -hmm. for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see that thing? He says he was in the island of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So what we're reading, we're reading the testimonies of Christ. Now go back to Revelation 7 verse 1 now. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth Stop right Holding there. The... He says, stop right there. He says, I, four, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. So now you have to imagine these four angels, these big black angels. Okay, hold this. We coming back here. Give me the book of Ezekiel chapter one. He says he saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Ezekiel chapter one and verse, let's start at verse five. Ezekiel one verse five. Let's read that. The book of Ezekiel chapter one verse five. Mm -hmm. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four li living creatures. Four living creatures, read. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So now Ezekiel is describing the angels, okay? It says he saw four living creatures, and this was their appearance, and they had the likeness of a man. Meaning what? They had the likeness of a man. You see how we are? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And everyone had four faces. Mm -hmm. And everyone had four wings. So now these angels have four faces and they, what, they have four wings on them. Go ahead. And their feet were straight feet. They were straight feet, read. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. They, they says the sole of their feet was the sole of a calf's foot. You ever seen, uh, you ever watched these movies, The Ninjas, Ninja? Ninjas, you know, movies that, are, that is, is about ninjas. When you look how they wear, meaning their shoes, that's how it looks. When it says the, the sole of a calf's foot, just like a ninja. Okay, go ahead. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Meaning the way they looked, he says they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Meaning what? Brass burnt in a furnace. Meaning what color was the angels? They were black. Big, black, scary angels. Okay, jump down. Keep reading, verse 8. So they had four faces, you understand, and four wings. Go ahead. Verse, four, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. You see that thing? It says they, were, it says they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. Remember, it says they had four wings. Go ahead. And they, had, and they four had their faces and their wings. They had their faces and their wings. Their four faces and their four wings. Jump down 
So verse 13. Come on. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. As for the likeness of the living creatures, the appearance was like burning coals of fire. You see that thing? Ezekiel is repeating himself because in verse in verse 7, he's telling you they are like, he says, they sparkle like the color of burnished brass. He's giving you the color of these angels. Brass burned in a furnace. Now he says, he says, the appearance were like the appearance of what? Burning coals of fire. They were pitch black. They look like us. So all these white angels with wings and all of that, that's not the angels. They don't look like that. The angels are black. Okay, read that again. Verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13. Go ahead. As for the likeness of the living creatures, the mm. appearance was like burning coals of fire. Was like what? Was like burning coals of fire. Was like burning coals of fire. Go ahead. And like the appearance of lamps. And the what? It, and like the appearance of lamps. And like the appearance of lamps. What verse you had? Go ahead. Keep going. It went up and down among the living creatures. Mm -hmm. And the fire was bright. And out of the fire went forth lightning. So now this goes into now the chariot on which the chariot, that their transportation system, it goes into that. But what I want to show you is that the angels that, the so-called angels that the white men be giving, they be painting these white angels with naked, with wings, that's not what the angels look like. You understand? Give me the book of Judges 13 verse 6. Watch this. Judges chapter 13 verse 6. I mean, they have four faces. So think about that. The appearance of a man, there are four wings, four faces. This is just one example of what the angels look like. There are those that have eight faces and so forth, but I'm just showing you in the context of what we're reading in Revelation 7 verse 1. Read that, Judges 13 verse 6. Judges chapter 13 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying... That's Manoah. Manoah. Read on. That's, this is now... Um, this is the parents of, 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 of Samson, Samson's parents. If you jump up to verse 2, read verse 2. Judges chapter 13, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And there was a certain man of Zorah. Read. Of the family of the Danites, mm -hmm. whose name was Manoah. Read. And his wife was barren and barren. So now this woman is Manoah's wife. You understand? Now she's coming to her husband because of what she saw. Okay, go ahead. Verse 3. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman mm -hmm. and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. He says, but you shall conceive and bear a son. So now the angel is promising this woman that was barren, you understand, she couldn't conceive. Listen, you're going to have a son. Now let's jump down to verse 6 now. Judges chapter 13, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, you see what and his saying? countenance... L listen what she's saying. He says, A man of God came unto me. Okay, go ahead. And his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Now watch this. What, the, what, what, is, what this man of God looked like? Because that's the angel, right? Watch this. Read very terrible what very terrible very terrible to look upon meaning what the angels are scary some scared of angel they are scary it's not like these not these white babies with these white naked babies with wings that you see is so give mm -mm. it says very terrible you understand right but i asked him not when he was mm -hmm. neither told he me his name Meaning, I didn't ask him where he come from, and I, he didn't tell me his name. Now, let's look at the power of the angels. Jump down to verse, jump down to verse, mm, verse 19. Now, read, read verse 18, actually. Read verse 18. Judges chapter 13, verse 18. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. Why askest thou thus after my name? Read. Seeing it is a secret. Because Manoah, you see what you see what he did? He asked him, What's your name? He said he didn't want to he didn't want to give him his name. Okay, go ahead. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering. 
mm-hmm. and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. So now, now they, oh, they, they made a sacrifice, you understand? Because now Manoah came, he, he saw the angel now, because the wife came and said, listen, this man of God spoke to me. It was very terrible to look upon. Now they are offering a, they are offering a sacrifice because they offered the angel food. He didn't, this angel didn't want to eat, okay? He didn't want to eat and he didn't want to tell them his name. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 20. Now, as they, they, they remember, now they're performing a sacrifice, right? Watch what, how the angels, how, he, how the angels goes back to the father. Watch this. Go ahead. For it came to pass mm. when the flame went up toward heaven from afar, from off the uh-huh. altar. From off the altar, read. That the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. The angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. Meaning the angel of the Lord entered into the flame. Mm, heavy stuff. Go ahead. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. They fell on their faces to the ground. Go ahead. Watch this. Read. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Mm-hmm. Read. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. Because guess what? As the flame was, as, as the sacrifices was burning on the altar, he entered into the flame, and guess what? He teleported, he went back to the heavens. That's some heavy stuff right there. Heavy stuff. So what I want to show you is that the idea that you have what the angels look like today must change. You understand? It must not be the same way. Watch this. Give me the book of Tobit, okay? Give me Tobit real quick. Tobit. This is when um, Tobias needed to go somewhere. He needed somebody to go with him, you understand, to collect some cash. Watch this. Give me to- Tobit chapter 5, verse 12. Tobit chapter 5, verse 12. Read that. Tobit chapter 5, verse 12. Go ahead. Then he said, I am Azarias, mm-hmm. the son of Ananias the Great, and of thy brethren. Now, we remember to- to- Tobit. He asked this man, the angel, but he didn't know it was an angel then. He, is, he was asking him a lot of questions. Jump up to verse 10. Okay, read verse 10. We're going to read down. Tobit chapter 5 verse 10. Mm-hmm. Then Tobit said unto him, Brother, show me of what tribe and family thou art. So now to, Tobit is asking him, he said, listen, I want to know where, which tribe you come from and the family you come out of. Go ahead. To whom he said, Mm-hmm. Dost thou seek a tribe or family or a hired man to go with thy son? He says, so what you want? Do you want a tribe or family or do you want somebody to accompany your son? Read. Then too, we said unto him, I would know, brother, thy kindred and name. He says, he's still asking, he's not baking down. He still wants to find out the tribe and his family. Go ahead. Then, then he said, I am Azarias the son of mm-hmm. Ananias the Great, and Great. of thy brethren. And of thy brethren. Now, give me Tobit 1 and 1. Tobit chapter 1 verse 1. Because it says, Then said, then he said, I am Azarias, the son of Ananias the Great, and of thy brethren. Watch this. Tobit 1 verse 1. Tobit chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. The book of the words of Tobit. Mm-hmm. Son of Tobiah. The son of Ananiah, the son of Aduel, the son of Gabriel, of the seed of Azael, of the tribe of Naphtali. So Tobit was from the tribe of Naphtali. Tobit was from the tribe of Naphtali. Now go back to Tobit chapter 5, verse 13, verse, verse 12 again. Tobit chapter 5, verse, 13, verse 12. Go ahead. Then he said, I am Azarias, the son of Ananias the Great. And of thy brethren. So what is the angel telling Tobit? What is the angel saying? The angel is, t- is saying, I'm from your tribe. That's what he's saying. That's some heavy stuff right there. The angel is telling Tob- Tobit, listen, I'm from, I'm, 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 what he says, and of thy brethren. What, tri- what tribe is Tobit from? Naphtali. So the angel is telling Tobit, listen, I'm from your tribe. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 19. 
Revelation chapter 19 and verse, verse 10. Revelation 19 verse 10. Watch this. Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. Go ahead. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. Meaning don't do I'm that. The... Meaning don't, hold on. Meaning don't worship me. See thou do it not. Meaning don't worship me. Go ahead. I am thy fellow servant. I am thy fellow servant. Now this is the angel telling John, I am your fellow servant. Go ahead. And of thy brethren. And of thy what? And of thy brethren. And of thy brethren. Go ahead. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of the Lord Jesus. No, that no, have the testimony. Jesus, of, of, that have the testimony of Jesus. Go ahead. That have the testimony of Jesus. Worship mm -hmm. God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So now the angel is telling John, the same way the, an the angel in the book of Tobit told Tobit, listen, I'm of thy brethren. We know the, the tribe that Tobit is from. You understand? Now John the Revelator, he is from the tribe of Judah. Now watch this. Give me Revelation 21 now. Revelation chapter 21 and verse, let's start at verse 10. Revelation 21 verse 10. Watch this. Revelation chapter 21 verse 10. Go ahead. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So now, watch this. Hmm. Wait. No, 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 no. He's from the tribe of Levi. Excuse me. John the Revelator is from the tribe of Levi. Okay, read that again. Revelation 21 verse 10. Revelation chapter 21 verse 10. Go ahead. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain mm -hmm. and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Descending out of heaven from God. Read on. Having the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Read, come on. And had a great wall, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and the gate, and at the gates twelve angels, and, and names written. At the gate, twelve angels. So now he's described in the kingdom of heaven on earth. He says the kingdom of heaven had twelve gates and twelve angels. Okay, go ahead. And names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So now at each gate, you had an angel sitting at each gate. And at each gate, you had the name of the, the, the names of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So you have the Judah gate, you have the Benjamin gate, you have the Levi gate, you have the Naphtali, you have the Zebulon gate, so on and so forth. So at each gate, you had an angel. Each angel is sitting at the gate that is associated with his tribe. Heavy stuff. So, guess what? We from the tribe of Judah, okay? Some are from the tribe of Benjamin. Guess what? Our lineage descends from the heavens. I need you brothers and sisters to understand that. Our lineage descends from the heavens. We have a family up there in the heavens. We have a family here on earth. And the family up there in the heavens, they are grouped up there according to their tribes. You understand? So it is here on earth. That's why at each gate you have an angel, as the angel at each gate according to his tribe. You see this thing? Now that's some heavy stuff right there, okay? I just want to drop some, some nuggets, okay? Watch this. Go back to Revelation 7 verse 1. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 1. Read that. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Stop right there. Holding. I saw four, hold on. I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Now we got a description of what these angels look like. You understand? Watch this. Hold this. Let's deal with the, with the angels, okay? He says they are standing at the four corners, the four, the four corners of the earth. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. 
Revelation chapter 9 verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. To do what? For to slay the third part of men. For to slay the third part of the third part of men. So these angels that we're reading about in Revelation 7, verse 1, that are at the four corners of the earth, their job is to do what? They are holding back destruction on this earth until the servants of God be sealed with God's commandments. Once the 144,000 are sealed, then they're going to let loose. You understand? So it says, these angels, it says, which were prepared for an hour, meaning this destruction, the destruction that's going to happen on this earth is going to happen at a specific hour, you understand, on a specific day, in a specific month, in a specific year, for to what to slay the third part of men. Give me Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Watch this. To slay the third part of men. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. So these angels are holding back World War Three. That's what they are doing until the servants of God be sealed with God's laws. We what you got? Revelation, Zechariah chapter thirteen, verse eight. Come on. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, mm -hmm. but the third part shall be left therein. So the two thirds of our people will be put to death. The one third is what they are going to, the one-third of Israel is prophesied they are, out, they are going to make it. You understand? The one-third, they are prophesied they will repent and get the kingdom. The two-thirds, they are not going to repent and they are going to be put to death. You understand? So that's what this is going into. Go ahead. And I will bring, and I will bring the third part through the fire. So the third part is going into the one-third. But the two-thirds that we're reading about in Revelation 9.15 is talking about those Israelites that will not repent. It doesn't matter how many scriptures we can give them, they are not going to repent. That's just what it is. You understand? That some of our mothers, our uncles, our niece, our nephews, our aunties, and so forth, they are not going to repent. You understand? Now, go back to where it was at now. Revelation 9. Revelation chapter 9, verse 15 again. Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. You know what? Hmm. What we read in Zechariah, give me Romans 9, okay? Romans chapter 9, because the Apostle Paul, he addressed this thing, all right? Romans chapter 9, verse 6. Watch this. Romans chapter 9, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Not as... Though the word of God had taken none effect. Read. For they are, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Okay, read that right. Come on. Romans chapter 9 verse 6. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect. Mm -hmm. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So now the apostle Paul is, uh, is saying, our people, the way they behave, it's as though the word of God is, is, is null and void, meaning it's taken none effect. No, the word of God is in full effect. You understand? It says, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. So what is he saying? He's saying, there are those of our people, they are Israelites, but they will not repent. Next verse, go ahead. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children. He says, just because they come from Abraham does not make, does not give them eligibility for what? For deliverance. Go ahead. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So what the Apostle Paul is explaining here to us is, that, is what? There, there are those of our people, yeah, they are Israelites, but does not mean they are going to repent. The proof of that is what we read in Zechariah 13 verse 8, that the two-thirds of our people will not repent. And that's what the Apostle Paul is explaining here in Romans 9, verse 6. You understand? Go back to Revelation now. Chapter 9, verse 15. Read that. Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. Go ahead. And the four angels were loosed, mm -hmm. which, were, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, 
For to slay the third part of men. For to slay the third part of men. But these four angels have not been loosed yet. You understand? They have not been loosed. World War III has not taken place yet because guess what? The servants of the Lord, the 144, has not been sealed yet. That process has started not in these last days, but it started even before. You understand? Those righteous forefathers in the past, they have been sealed already. The only ones that is left is we just left with a with a few. We don't know the number, but we are not waiting for 12,000, meaning from we're not the 12,000 is not gonna start right now. It has started already. The sealing has already started happening way back then. There's only a few that is left. We just don't know the number, though. You understand? Now go back to Revelation 7, verse 1. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. Go ahead. And after these things. I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. On the four holding corners the... of the earth. Hold on. On the four corners of the earth because that's where we are scattered as a people like all over the world. Go ahead. Holding the four winds of the earth. Holding the four that... winds of the earth. So these four angels that were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year to slay the third part of men, they are holding the four winds of the earth. We're going to explain that in a minute. Go ahead. That the wind should not blow on the earth, mm -hmm. nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Because right now, we are, we are, the wind is blowing outside. The, the wind is blowing, so obviously it's not talking about the regular wind. Give me that in Job 11 verse 6. It's not talking about regular wind, okay? Because wind is blowing outside. So obviously it's not talking about that. Okay, Job chapter 11 verse 6. Watch this. Job chapter 11 verse 6. Go ahead. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. The secrets of wisdom. Okay. The secrets of wisdom. Give me hold this. Give me Sarah 39 verse 1. The secrets of wisdom. To get the secrets of wisdom, this is how we get it. Okay. Watch this. Sarah 39 verse 1. Ecclesiastes 39 verse 1. Come on. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High. To the what? To the law of the Most High. If you give your mind to the law of the Most High God, what will happen? Go ahead. And is occupied in the meditation thereof. And you occupy, you meditate in God's commandments. Read. Will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients. You're going to seek out the wisdom of all the ancients, meaning the secrets of wisdom. Go ahead. And be occupied in prophecies. You're going to be occupied in prophecies. But the key to understand the prophecies is the laws of the Most High. You meditate upon, know you're meditating upon God's commandments. You are occupying your mind with the laws of God. Like we read about in Isaiah 26 verse 3. Go ahead. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men. Mm -hmm. The renowned men is our forefathers, these famous men. Read. And where subtle parables are. Mm -hmm. He will be there also. You see that part right there? It says where subtle parables are, he will be there also. You're going to see subtleties in the scriptures. Hidden things. You understand? Because the wisdom of the Lord is subtle. Watch this. Go back to where was that now? Job 11 verse 6. Job chapter 11 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. The secrets of wisdom. The only time when the Lord will show us the secrets of wisdom is if we are occupying, we, we occupy our minds with the laws of God. We apply what is written. Read. That they are double to they, that they which are, is. It says that the secret meaning, the things that are written in this book, they have more than one meaning. They have double meanings. Some have triple meanings. You understand? Basically, they have more, there's more than one meaning to the scriptures. There's different layers of understanding, which takes time and, time and experience in this truth. So now, here Job is telling us that the secrets of wisdom, the things that are written, they have double meanings. So when we go back to Revelation 7 verse 1 again. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1. Read. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, mm -hmm. holding the four winds of the earth. Stop right there. Holding the four winds of the earth. Now we need to deal with what is the wind of the earth that the angels are holding. 
because we had now discovered that the scriptures have double meanings and guess what the wind is blowing outside so it's not talking about regular wind give me that in second Esdras chapter 13 okay second Esdras chapter 13 verse 5 second Esdras 13 verse 5 let's read that Second is chapter 13, verse 5. You know what? Hmm. Watch this. Start at verse 1. You know what? Start at verse 2. Let's start at verse 2. Second is chapter 13, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea. There arose a wind from the sea. Go ahead. That it that it moved, that it moved all the waves thereof. So this wind that was coming from the sea, it says that it moved all the waves thereof. Now, watch this. These, mm, read that again, verse 2. Second Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, mm -hmm. that it moved all the waves thereof. That it moved all the waves thereof. So the wind that is from the sea, that it moved all the waves thereof. Jump down to verse 5. Watch this. Say Genesis chapter 13, verse 5. Go ahead. And after this I beheld, and lo, mm -hmm. there was gathered together a multitude of men. Stop right there. There was gathered together a multitude of men. A multitude of men. 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 Go ahead. A multitude of men. Come on. Out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. The man that came out of the sea is what we just read in verse 2. Read verse 5 again. Second is chapter 13, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men a out of number. Of men. A multitude of men out of number. This multitude of men is talk about the nations on earth. Go ahead. From the four winds of the heaven. From the four winds of the heaven. So these the the, the winds that is talking about that the wind that we just read in Revelation 7, verse 1 is not talking about regular wind, it's talking about the nations on earth. The heaven is talking about the kingdoms here on earth. You understand? The nations of the kingdoms that are ruling over this earth this time. Read. Right? To subdue the man that came out of the sea. To subdue the man that came out of the sea. That man that came out of the sea is talking about Christ. The sea is talking about, it's not talking about the Atlantic Ocean. Watch this. Give me Genesis 1 verse 6. The, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. That sea is not talking about the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Genesis chapter 1 verse 6. Watch this. Genesis chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And God said... Let they be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. So this firmament is heaven. You understand? The firmament, it says, in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. You understand? So you had the ozone layer. You had the what's over the ozone layer and was below the ozone layer. You understand? So that firmament is what divides the waters above the firmament and the waters below the firmament. You understand? That's the ozone layer. Go ahead. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Read. And God called the firmament heaven. Mm -hmm. He called the and what? The even, and God called the firmament heaven. God called this firmament, he called it heaven. Go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the second day. So now when it says to subdue the man that came out of the sea, it's talking about Christ. The sea is talking about what? The sky. You understand? The waters above the firmament. That's where he's coming out of. Because he's be descending into the earth. You understand? Christ will be descending into the earth. So that's why it says to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Not the Atlantic, but the firmament. The waters above the firmament, that's the sea. You understand? Above the ozone layer. Let me put it that way. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew, okay? Matthew chapter 24. 
Give me Matthew chapter 24 and verse Matthew 24 and verse 30. Matthew chapter 24 verse 30. Mm -hmm. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Mm -hmm. In what? In heaven. In heaven. It says, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's the man that is coming out of the sea. Go ahead. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Mm -hmm. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with you, power. You and uh -huh. Come on, come on. Coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So now it says, then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. That's the 12 tribes. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven and with power and great glory. So that's the man that will be coming out of the sea. And the nations on earth, they are going to do what? They're going to want to subdue, meaning fight the man that is coming out of the sea. Give me Habakkuk chapter 3. Because Habakkuk, he spoke about this thing. Okay, Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse, start at verse 14. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 14. Go ahead. Thou didst strike through with the staves the head of his villages. The head of his villages. The head of the villages is talking about Esau. He's the head of the villages. Go ahead. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. The day is the winds. The four winds, you understand, is, to, is the winds, which is the nations, the armies of the earth. Go ahead. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Meaning they rejoice in, devour, in destroying us secretly. You understand? All these nations... They, they rejoice in destroying us secretly. Go ahead. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses. Mm -hmm. Through the heap of great waters. Through the heap of great waters. That's the nations. Go ahead. When I heard, my belly trembled. Mm -hmm. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones. Right. And I trembled in myself. Right. That I might rest in the day of trouble. Mm -hmm. When the when he cometh unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. That's talk about Christ, the man that is coming out of the sea. So what Abakuk is explaining is describing the second coming of Christ. He says, I wish I was dead on that day, so that when it's all over, I can be woken up. But he's going to be there. He's going to see when the Lord enters in, when the Lord descends with the clouds of heaven. He's going to be coming with with, with an army when he comes into this earth. That's how the Lord is going to come through. You understand? Now go back to 2nd Ezra now. 2nd Ezra chapter 13 verse 5 again. 2nd Ezra chapter 13 verse 5. Ray. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men, mm -hmm. out of number, from the four winds of the heaven, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. To subdue the man that came out of the sea. When the Lord descends into the earth, the nations are going to come together to fight against Christ. That's what Ezra is explaining here. Okay? Second Ezra 13 verse 29. We're going to read down. Second Ezra chapter 13 verse 29. Mm -hmm. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Meaning us, the 12 tribes of Israel, the one third. Read on. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Read on. And one shall undertake to fight against another. The one that will undertake to fight against another is the nations. Meaning what? This, when the Lord returns, the, 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 the World War Three would have already started when the Lord descends into the earth. World War III would have already started. You understand? So the nations will be going to war with one another. Read. And once, and one shall undertake to fight against another. One city against another. Mm -hmm. One place against another. Go ahead. One people against another. Come on. One realm against another. Read. 
and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass mm-hmm. and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before and then shall my son be declared you see that part right so- while they are fighting then will Christ be declared meaning Christ is going to show up you understand it says then shall my son be declared go ahead then shall my son be declared whom thou sowest as a man ascending. Who you saw as a man ascending. What is he talking about? Give me the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 9. It says, then shall my son be declared as you saw as a man ascending. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Read that. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Come on. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, mm-hmm. he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. You see that thing? A cloud received him. Who's the him? Christ. You understand? This is the disciples now. Peter, James, and John, they saw Christ ascending into heaven. A cloud received him, meaning a chariot. He went into a chariot. He teleported. Just like the angels that went into the fire and went up, Christ did the same thing. He went into a chariot. Go ahead. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. That's the angels, read. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same is Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So he's saying, the angels are telling them, say, listen, the same way you see him ascending into heaven, that's how he's going to come down. <clears throat> Excuse me. The same way you saw him going up is how he's going de- to descend into the earth to bring forth judgment and to deliver the, the one third. You understand? Go back to Second Ezra now, chapter 13, verse, 30, verse 32 again. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 32. Go ahead. And the time shall and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass mm-hmm. and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before and then shall thy shall my son be declared whom thou sowest as a man ascending right and when all the people hear his voice every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against leave the battle they have one against another so it says, when while they were fighting, while they are fighting, when Christ enters into the earth, is that the nations they are going to stop fighting with one another. They want to come together to fight against the man that is coming out of the sea, like we read in Second Ezra, eighteen, verse five. Go ahead. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together. That's the nations, as thou sowest them, willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. Because they think they're going to they're gonna overcome Christ by fighting. They think they're going to win. Go ahead. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion. That's right. Read that again, verse 35. He shall what? But he shall stand, up, but he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion. He shall, te- he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion. Go ahead. And Zion shall come mm-hmm. and shall be showed to all men. Read. Being prepared and builded, like as thou sowest the hill graven without hands. Meaning what? The kingdom of heaven is going to be built afterward when the Lord destroys these nations that are going to want to go to fight with him. And the Lord is going to what? Is going to deliver us and the people of the earth will see it. Read. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations. Mm-hmm. The ones that wanted which... to fight against that went that thought they were going to fight and win. Go ahead. Which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. Into the, pe- the tempest because he's coming with fire. That's why he says, you know, I'm not going to meet you as a man. You understand? I'm not going to meet you as a man. He's coming, with, he's coming at something else. He's coming as a spiritual man when he returns with power and great glory. Okay? Let's go back now. Revelation 7, verse 1 again. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1. Read. And after these things, I saw four angels 
standing on the four corners of the earth. Come on. Holding the four winds of the earth. Mm -hmm. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. So when he says that the wind should not blow on the earth, remember earth is just the military. You understand? That's the military. That's your armies. Yeah, in South Africa, it's like the South African army and so forth. You understand? Then it says, no, on the sea. That would be your navy. You understand? The navy. Okay? Then it says, no, on any tree. That's in the sky. That's aerial warfare. That's, your, that's the Air Force. And in America, they have the Space Force now. You understand? So, so that they can subdue the men that came out of the sea. You see that thing? Read on. Verse 2. Come on. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, mm -hmm. having the seal of the living God. And he crowed with a live, and he crowed with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. You see what he's saying? It says, There was now this another angel that comes from the east. He's got the seal of the living God. It says, He cried with a loud voice to the four angels, the, the four angels that we read about in verse 1, to whom it was given to head the earth and the sea. So these four angels, their purpose is to destroy. Right now they are holding back distractions because with this 144 has not been sealed yet. Okay? So this one angel is going to stop the four angels from, from, from letting loose until the, the seal is done. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 3. Verse 3. Saying, heard not the earth, mm -hmm. neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So, guess what? Before the destruction can come, the, guess what? The 144,000 must be sealed with God's laws. That's what this angel that is coming from this east is saying to the four angels. He says, don't hurt the earth yet until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Let's deal with the servants. Give me that in Leviticus 25. Leviticus, okay. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. Read that. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. Mm -hmm. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So the servants are the children of Israel. The servants of the Most High God are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 7, verse 3 again. Revelation chapter 7, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Till we have sealed the children of Israel with till we have sealed the children of Israel in their foreheads. Now watch this. What is this seal that is talking about that the servants, the children of Israel, must be sealed with? Give me that in Isaiah. Chapter 8, he says, until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. What is the seal? Give me that in Isaiah 8, verse 16. Isaiah, write this down. Okay? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Read that. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Go ahead. Find up the testimony. Mm -hmm. Seal the law among my disciples. You see that thing? Seal the law among my disciples. That's why right now, what are we teaching? The laws of God. Because that's how we're going to get the kingdom. That's how we're going to get, that's the sealing. We're going to be sealed with God's commandments. Right now, we are being sealed with God's laws. Because we are repenting so that we can apply what is written in this book. That's the sealing. That's the seal. Read that again, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the law among my disciples. Okay. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians 1, verse 13. Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Mm -hmm. In whom also, 
in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So that seal, that sealing is what? The word of truth, which is the gospel of our deliverance. So we must be sealed with that. You understand? So that's what the Apostle Paul is making. He's saying the same thing that Isaiah is saying. Okay? 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. Go ahead. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest and the and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. So you see what the apostle Paul is saying, who hath also sealed us. So guess what? He's included in that. What is the apostle Paul letting us know? He's letting us know that he's sealed, you are sealed already. That's what he's saying right there in the spirit. He says, Who hath also sealed us? And given the earnest of the spirit in our heart. You see that thing? Give me that in Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. Revelation 6 verse 9. So the apostle Paul, what he's saying is that he was, he was part of that, he was sealed already. So in these last days, we are not starting from the beginning to start with the count of the 144, 12,000 from each tribe. No. That is already started already. The apostle Paul is giving you is, 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 is dropping some heavy jewels right here. Okay? Revelation 6, verse 9. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. Go ahead. And when he had opened the fifth seal. Stop right there. And when he had opened the fifth seal. Right now we are in the fifth seal right now. We are not in the sixth seal. We are in the fifth seal. Okay, go ahead. And when he had opened this, the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Because that's the testimony of Christ. So he's saying, he says, he says, I saw, he said what? He says, I saw under the altar, this is in the heavens now, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held meaning our forefathers and foremothers that died defending this gospel. They are up there in the heavens with the Lord. You understand? And watch what they say. He's not talking about our forefathers in the world that dropped dead because they didn't keep the commandments. No, he's talking about our forefathers that kept these laws and they died defending the gospel. Go ahead. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see what they are asking? They are complaining to the Lord. He says, how long? You understand? How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Meaning those that put us to death. Those that are oppressing our sons and daughters down there. They are complaining to the Mosai. So up there in the heavens, those righteous Israelites... Guess what they are doing? They are complaining to the Most High, day and night, because they are praying for vengeance. Okay, come on. And white robes were given unto every one of them, mm -hmm. and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. They should what? And that they should rest yet for a little season. That they should rest yet a little season. They should rest yet a little season. That season is the season we're in right now. That's the season. Meaning what? The season where the Lord has given us a chance for us to get our minds right. That's the season he's talking about. So right now we are in that, 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 that fifth seal. The fifth seal is the, the seal that we're in for, the, for us to get our minds right under the grace that the Lord has given unto us. Go ahead. Until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. You see what he's saying? He says, we was what he says, he says, rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also, that's talk about us now, and their brethren, our brothers and sisters in this truth, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Now that's heavy right there. This is some heavy stuff what we just read. It says that that should be killed. 
as they were. Because our forefathers, the apostles, they were put to death. And their wives, they are put to death. Should be fulfilled. Meaning what? There are those of us in this truth that are going to die for this truth. You understand? Not everybody, but there are those of us that are going to die defending this gospel. Watch this. Give me not everybody though. Okay, watch this. Give me that book of Matthew. Okay, Matthew 23 verse 34. Because I know some of brothers are scared now. Matthew 23 verse 34. Watch this. Matthew chapter 23 verse 34. Come on. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and mm. scribes. Come on. And some of them ye shall kill and crucify. You see that part right there? And some of them, not all. It says, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. Okay, come on. And some of them ye sh shall ye scourge in your synagogues mm -hmm. and persecute them from city to city. You see that thing? Wherever we are scattered, city to city, wherever we're going to teach the gospel, it says some of us are going to be put to death for this. You understand? As our forefathers were, guess what is going to happen? But he's saying some of them, not everybody. Okay? Let's go back. Revelation chapter 6, verse 11 again. You know what? Revelation. Yeah, read verse 11. Read verse 11. Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. Go ahead. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Mm -hmm. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. And their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So now, you see, that's what we read in Matthew 23. It's not everybody. So jump up to verse 10 again. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Our blood on them that dwell on the earth. Because guess what? Here on the earth, our forefathers were put to death. And who was doing that? Rome was doing that. The Greeks was doing that. All the other nations was doing that. America was doing that. You understand? The Buddhists, the Dutch, the Britain, the British. Here in South Africa, they was doing that. In Europe, our forefathers over there. In the Americas, our forefathers over there, guess what? Revelation 18, verse 24. Watch this. Hey, there's too much feedback. Revelation. There's too much feedback in the background. What's going on? Read that. Revelation 18, verse 24. Revelation chapter 18, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And in her was found the blood of the prophets. You see that thing? Was found. In her was found the blood of the, the blood of prophets. The same prophets that are complaining to the Most High God now in the heavens. Okay, go ahead. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints mm -hmm. and of all that was slain upon the earth. You see that thing? And that was the that was that that is what, what, what that is what the complaint was about. Now, Second Ezra chapter four verse thirty five. Now, Second Ezra chapter four verse thirty five. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 35. Mm -hmm. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask question of these things in their chambers, saying? In their chambers. Remember, the chambers of souls, jump down to verse, read verse 41. Verse 41. Mm -hmm. Then said I, no, no, Lord, that she cannot. That can she not. And he said unto me, In the grave, the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. You see that thing? In the, it says, In the grave, the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. So the ch there's a chamber, the, the, a chamber of souls, is, that's where the Lord is housing all the souls. You understand? Those righteous souls, they are able to talk to the Mosai and complain. Jump up to verse 35 now. Verse 35. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask question of those things in their chambers? Saying, how long shall I hope on this fashion? Mm -hmm. When cometh the fruit of the flow of our reward? 
So these are the souls in the chambers that are complaining to the Father about this. So just like those our forefathers that died defending this gospel, they are able to talk to the Lord. Here on earth, when we are being sealed with the laws of God, we also must complain. That's what the prayer was about in Sirach 36. You understand? That make the time short in our captivity. We are complaining. Go back to Sirach 36 because we read about this when we are going over the prayer. Okay? Sirach chapter 36. When it says make the time short. Sirach 36 and verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 7. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath mm -hmm. and take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. That's the prayer. Go ahead. Make the time short. You see that part right there? Make the time short. We don't, let's, we want to come out of this. We want to go home. Make the time short, Lord. That's, these are the prayers we must send up. Go ahead. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wondrous and let them declare thy wonderful works. Read. Let, let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire. That's when, that's, now, now that's, the, that, that's fire that will burn with brimstone. That's the fire, meaning the fire of the nuclear bombs that are going to be on this earth. And the fire that will be what, that will be burning forever with, with anyone, during the final judgment. Go ahead. Up to a thousand years. Read. And let them perish that oppress the people. Mm -hmm. Smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, there is none other but we. Read. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. You see that thing? So right now the Lord is, is, gathering, our, is gathering us together right now. That's what he's doing, right? He's gathering the 12 tribes of Israel together because only he can do that. So while, guess what? On the last, in the, in, in, on the, in, when the Lord returns, he will, guess what? We are going to be taken up. You understand? That's the gathering also that he's also talking about here. He's also making reference to that. So just like our forefathers, you understand, in the spirit world complaining to the Lord, we also must complain to the most High God about this thing. That he must make the time short. Okay? Now, let's go back now. Revelation chapter 7, verse 3 again. Revelation chapter 7 verse 3. Saying, Heard not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Go ahead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of the tribes of the children of Israel. So the 144,000 that are going to be sealed, 12,000 from each tribe, these are men. The 144,000 is men, is not women, is men. Revelation 14, verse 4. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. Come on. These are they which were not defiled with women. You see that thing? The 144,000 will not be defiled with women. So is this talking about the fact that they are not going to sleep with, with women? No. It's talking about defiled in terms of philosophy. You understand? Doctrines. That's what he's talking about. Because the doctrines usually come through who? The women. Like we were going over the class last night. Yes. Go ahead. For they are virgins. For they are virgins. Because I used to be in Jehovah's Witness. Okay. I used to go to that demonic uh, cult. Because that's not a church. So he's saying, for they are virgins. Because I remember, so every year, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they have this con conference. They go to Nazareth, okay? And I remember this one time, I think they were supposed to go the following week. Me, I didn't go. And they were, they were just prepping the people. They say, listen, uh, when we go to Nazareth, we're going to be seeing that there, there is some of the 144 those that are part of the 144,000, they are going to be at the, at the conference. So, you know, don't treat, like, don't treat them like celebrities and so on and so forth. That's what they were telling us. Mm. Now they all praise to the Most High for this truth. 
Oh my God, man. Oh, praise to the Lord for this thing. Because here he's saying, for they are virgins. So does it mean, and, and they were saying, no, no, uh, they have not dealt with women ever since they was born. You understand? So watch this. What, let's see what this means when it says, for they are virgins. Give me that in 2 Corinthians, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is what it means when it says, for they are virgins. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. With godly For jealousy. I have... Okay. You know the scripture says don't add to the scriptures. Don't add to the scriptures. Read verse 2 again. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Read. For I have espoused you to one husband mm -hmm. that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You see that thing right there? It says, I have espoused you to one husband. Who's the husband in this case? Christ. It says, I have espoused that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Meaning what? Give me that in Revelation 14 verse 12. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Read that. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see that thing? When it says that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ, meaning what? You must keep the commandments before the Lord returns. So now, let's go back. Revelation now, chapter 14, verse 4 again. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. Mm -hmm. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. For they are virgins. So it's not saying they are not dealing with women. Because the apostles, they were married. Some, some of the apostles, they had wives. You understand? The apostle Peter and so forth. Okay. Our forefathers in the past, they had wives. So are they not going to get the kingdom because they have, they, have, they have had sex? No, he's not talking about that. You understand? The, the proof of that, give me that in Revelation. Give me Matthew 19 verse 28. Matthew 19 verse 28. Watch this. This is Christ speaking to the disciples. Read that. Matthew chapter 19 verse 28. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you. No, no. It, Read that again. Matthew 19 verse 28. Matthew chapter 19 verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, that ye should have followed me. No, no. In the... No, that ye which have followed me. Come on. That ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You see what the Christ is telling the disciples? He's saying, ye also, he says, listen, those of you that have followed me in the regeneration, meaning what? The apostles, they are going to be back. They are back. Let me put it that way. They are back. It says, they followed me in the regeneration. It says, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. Meaning those that followed Christ when he walked the earth. Okay. It says, you also, you also, you twelve, you're going to sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So, the apostle Peter was the head apostle. You understand? He had a wife. So, is he not going to get the kingdom because of how Christianity interprets this verse? You see, it don't make no sense. Give me that in Mark chapter 1. Let's get some more proof. Mark 1. Okay. Mark chapter 1 and verse 29. Watch this. The book of Mark chapter 1 verse 29. Come on. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Read. But Simon's wife, but Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Anon means immediately. So, but the key you want to focus on it says, but Simon's wife's mother. So Simon, meaning Simon Peter, he had a wife. His mother-in-law was sick. So is he not going to get the kingdom? No. So he's not talking about that. So let's go back. Okay. Revelation 14 verse 4 again. 
Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. Come on. These are they which were not defiled with women. Mm -hmm. For they are virgins. For they are virgins, meaning what? They are going to be prepared. We are now being sealed with God's commandments. That's the virgin is talking about. We are chaste. We are disciplined in God's laws. That's what he's talking about. Read on. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. You see that thing? The 144 are not going to make excuses. Whatever the Lord says, they, they are going to do it. That's why it says, these are they which for the, follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Go ahead. These were redeemed from among men. They were what? These were redeemed from among men. Because the 144,000 are men. The 144,000 are men. Go ahead. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. So now let's go back to Revelation chapter 7 again. Revelation 7 verse 4. Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. Come on. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed and hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So twelve thousand from each tribe. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Reuben was mm. sealed 12,000. The Reuben is the Seminole Indians of today, so called Seminole Indians. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Gad was sealed 12,000. The Gad, that's the, the Native American Indians. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Asher was sealed 12,000. Read. Of the tribe of Naphtali, were sealed twelve thousand. Read. Of the tribe of Manasseh, were sealed twelve thousand. Read. Of the tribe of Simeon, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zebulon, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. So now, some of you have read this when it says, as some of you have asked me about this, because it says, of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Now, let's deal with that, of the tribe of Joseph. Give me the book. Give me the book of Ezekiel 36, okay? Ezekiel 36, verse 16. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 16. Go ahead. Moreover, the word oh, no, of the Lord. Sorry. 37, 37. Ezekiel 37, verse 16. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 16. Go ahead. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. So for Judah, he says, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and the children of Israel, his companions. So Judah, Judah's companions is Benjamin and Levi. So he's saying, take one stick for Judah and the children of Israel, his companions, that's Benjamin and Levi. Go ahead. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph. For what? For Joseph. For Joseph, what we read in Revelation 7 verse 8. Go ahead. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, you, and for you all the that, house of... Hold on. The, it says, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. So, Joseph goes into Ephraim. So, when it says the tribe of Joseph, it's talking about Ephraim, because Ephraim was the second born of Joseph that he got when he was in Egypt, and Ephraim is the head tribe of Northern Kingdom. Okay? Read that part again. For Joseph... For Joseph... The stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. So Ephraim is the head tribe, and then you've got Manasseh and the rest of the tribes. You understand? So he's the he's the head of northern kingdom. That's Ephraim. Okay. Jump down to verse eighteen. The, what we're reading here is the reason why we have the twelve tribes chart. That chart that you see, okay, that many of you have you've seen it with all the tribes. We get it from here. Go ahead. Verse 19. Verse 19. Say unto them, 
Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim. You see that thing? I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim. So when you read Joseph in Revelation 7 verse 8, is making reference to Ephraim. Go ahead. And the stick and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, mm -hmm. and they shall be one in my hand. You see that thing? And they shall be one in my hand, meaning all 12 on one stick, meaning on one chart. Judah be on the top, then Benjamin and Levi, then Ephraim and the rest of the tribe. So when you read about Joseph, is actually going into who? Is going into Ephraim. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 33 verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 17. Mm -hmm. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock. And his horns are like the horns of unicorns. Unicorn is a rhinoceros. Is rhino. Is a rhino. Unicorn is a rhino. Okay, go ahead. With them, he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. So now and he's going to tell you who the... Hold on, wait. It says, it says what? It says, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. So he's going to tell you who these horns are that will push the people together to the ends of the earth. Go ahead. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim. They and are they the are the... And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim. That's one horn. Go ahead. And they are the thousands of Manasseh. That's the small horn on the rhino. So rhino, unicorn meaning one horn. But there's a huge horn on a rhino which represents Ephraim. And the smaller horn represents Manasseh. You see that thing? So when you read in Revelation 7 verse 8, don't get confused by this. Because what you notice is that the Jehovah's Witnesses, they also get the, they confuse this verse right here. When they say, when they say Joseph, you know what they do? They will say, you see, because this, the Jehovah's Witnesses, this is where they get spiritual Israel from. So when they say, you see Joseph, then they say no, because the children of Joseph were adopted into the tribe. So that, that's called spiritual Israel. That's where their spiritual Israel doctrine comes from. That's how they break it down. You see that thing? But watch this. Let's go into the history because they don't read the history. Let's go to Genesis 48. Watch this. Genesis chapter 48. We're going to read one. Then we're going to jump. Genesis 48 verse 1. Watch this. Genesis chapter 48 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after these things. That one told Joseph. Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. You see that thing? He's two, he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee in Egypt, into Egypt are mine. This is As you I mean, hold on, hold, wait, wait. Now, this is Jacob speaking to Joseph. Remember, Joseph is Jacob's son. So, jo Jacob, our forefather, is telling Joseph, say, listen, these two sons that you, you got in Egypt, they are mine. You see that? Because they are the same, li they, le listen, this is the grandfather speaking, speaking about his grandsons. So, when you say adopted, what does that mean? You see, like, Christianity is one hell of a drug, okay? Because Jehovah's Witnesses, they like to separate themselves from Christianity. No, no, they are part of it. They fall under that umbrella. So Jacob is saying to Joseph, he says, these two sons that you got in Egypt, they are my children, which is correct. Go ahead. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. So what is Jacob doing? He's making them part of the tribes. That's what he's doing. That's what we read about. Jo when you read Joseph in Revelation 7, he's making reference to Ephraim. Because in Revelation 7, it mentions Manasseh. 
Manasseh in verse 6. Read Revelation 7 verse 6. Revelation chapter 7 verse 6. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Asher was sealed 12,000. Mm -hmm. Of the tribe of Naphtali was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000. You see, Manasseh is mentioned here. Because you might be asking, so why is, it not, why is Manasseh mentioned here, but here it says Joseph, and then we had to go to Ezekiel to, make, to, to show you that actually he is talking about Ephraim. Because Ephraim is the head tribe. Watch this. Give me, go back to Genesis 48. Genesis chapter 48 and verse 19. This is when Jacob was blessing the sons of Joseph. Watch this. Genesis chapter 48 verse 19. Mm -hmm. And his father refused and said, You know what? I know. Mm -hmm. You know what? Start of verse 18. Genesis chapter 48 verse 18. Read. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is thy firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. So now Joseph is telling Jacob, say, listen, no, no, don't put your right hand on Ephraim. Put your right hand on Manasseh because Manasseh is the firstborn. Go ahead. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. He also shall become a people. And he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he. Mm -hmm. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. So that's why in Revelation 7, verse 8, is mentioning Joseph. So you see, this Bible is, is a mystery. That's why it says precept upon precept, line upon line. So when they read it, they just say, no, Joseph. It means that's where the spiritual Israel comes in. So but we're adopting them. Joseph, Jacob wasn't doing that. These were his grandkids. You understand? So, but I want to show you that the reason why you don't see, um, you see Manasseh is mentioned, but Ephraim is not mentioned is because Ephraim was the head tribe. That's why if to get that information, that's why I said the secret of wisdom. You have to go to precepts to reveal, to understand what this is saying. You understand? Now, go back to Revelation 7 now. Revelation 7. I want to go into read Revelation 7 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 7 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And of the tribe of Simeon was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar was sealed 12,000. So now the Issachar and Zebulon. I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with that. But what I'm showing you is the reason why we went to Deuteronomy 33 verse 17. Go back there. Something I forgot. Deuteronomy 33 verse 17. Let's read that again. Then we're gonna go back to Revelation. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 17. Mm -hmm. His glory is like the first thing of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them, he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. They are the thousands of Manasseh. So now, watch this. So it says, Ephraim and Manasseh, they will push the people together to the ends of the earth. What is he making reference to? Watch this. Give me the book of Hosea 11 verse 10. Hosea chapter 11 verse 10. The book of Hosea, chapter 11, verse 10. Mm -hmm. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. The children shall tremble from the west. So this whole book, the book of Hosea, it goes into northern kingdom. If you read Hosea chapter 1, you can read that on your own. It, it, it's actually dedicated to the northern kingdom. You understand? Read that again. Hosea chapter 11 verse 10. They, they shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. So Ephraim and Manasseh, they're going to push the people to the west. You understand? 
These two are going to push the people together to the ends of the earth, towards the west, meaning the western hemisphere. Because where we are in Africa, this is the eastern hemisphere. So Ephraim and Manasseh, they will push the people to the western hemisphere. Give me Zechariah 8 verse 7. They will push the people to the, to the west. Okay. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 7. Come on. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country mm -hmm. and from the west country. He says, I will save my people from the east country. That's the eastern hemisphere. That's where we at. The diaspora, that's what they call it in history. And, we, and from the west country, that's the western hemisphere. That's the Americas, North, Central, and South America. Okay? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 45 now. Isaiah 43 verse 5. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 5. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. You see that thing? I will bring thy seed from the east, the east, eastern hemisphere, and gather thee from the west. Remember, and go back to Deuteronomy 33 verse 17. So we don't lose the thought. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 17. Go ahead. His glory is like the first thing of his bullock. Mm -hmm. And his horns are like the horns of unicorns. Wait. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Manasseh. And they are the ten thousand and, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 17. Come on. His glory is like the first things of his bullock. And his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the thousands, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. So now remember, Ephraim is what? Is the so-called Puerto Ricans of today. Manasseh is the so-called Cubans of today. Now Cuba, okay, then Puerto Rico. This is Central America. But Bona, these two. They will be primarily in Central America. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 48, verse 16. Genesis chapter 48, verse 16. Genesis chapter 48, verse 16. Go ahead. The angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, mm -hmm. and let my name be named on them. You see what he's saying? This is Jacob speaking now. He's telling Joseph. It says, and the, it says, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, meaning Ephraim and Manasseh, and let my name be named on, on them. That's how they became part of the 12 tribes of Israel, because Jacob, he's told Joseph what this, what's going to happen. You understand? Keep going. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, mm -hmm. and let them grow into a multitude. In the midst of the earth. That's the key right there. It says, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. That's Central America. The midst of the earth. That's Central America right there. Watch this. Now, let's go to the book of Second Esdras now. Remember it says they will push the people together to the ends of the earth. You understand? But Ephraim and Manasseh, they will be in the ends of the earth, meaning Central America. Okay, watch this. Second Esdras. Chapter 13, verse 40. Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 40. Mm -hmm. These are the ten tribes those which were carried. Are ten, those are the ten tribes. Come on, read that, read that right. Come on. Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea. The king, whom Salmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. Mm -hmm. And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. It says, and so came they into another land. Now watch this. We see what was, this is around 722 BC. What we're reading here in verse 40. It says, it says what? It says, Shalmaneser, this is Shalmaneser the fifth. It says, Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, so came they into another land. 
This is around 722 BC. So now we was taken because we were slaves in, in under the Assyrians. You understand? We were slaves under the Assyrians. And then when we were slaves under the Assyrians, the kingdom then took over from the Assyrians was who? Was Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar. And then after Nebuchadnezzar, the kingdom that took over was Persia. So during the time of Babylon, because they are not mentioning Babylon here. You understand? But Babylon is mentioned. So this is like huge gap of history going on here. These two verses, 40 and 41, is two jumps of history. I mean, they are not mentioning the Babylonian Empire. But from, from Assyria, we went to Babylon. You understand? Read verse 41. Watch this. Second is chapter 13, verse 41. Mm -hmm. But they took counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country with, where never mankind dwelt. So now, verse 41, we are in Persia. So verse 40 is 722 BC. That's the Assyrians. Verse 41 when it says they took this counsel among themselves, now this is when we are in Persia. So that means Babylon has already passed. We are in Persia now. You understand? This is around 539 BC when Cyrus was the king. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezra. Okay? Ezra chapter 1. Let's go to the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 1. Let's start at verse 1. Ezra 1 verse 1. We're going to read down. The book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Apologies. So what you want to notice is that um, in 2nd Ezra, chapter 18, verse 40, this is 722 BC under the Assyrians. You understand? Then the verse 41, we are in Persia. So the Babylonians took over when? Around 606 BC, Babylon. Around 606 BC, that's when Nebuchadnezzar took over. That's when he invaded Judah. And under Nebuchadnezzar, it was Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and the rest of the tribes as well. You understand? Verse 41, we are in Persia, all 12. Ezra 1 verse 1. Let's read that. Ezra chapter 1 verse 1. Now the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia. Cyrus, king of Persia that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. The Lord stood up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it, and put it also in writing, saying... So, so now this is Cyrus the Great. He's ruling now. Go ahead. Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Read verse 2 again. You know there's some words you are skipping here. Read that again. Ezra chapter 1 verse 2. Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So now Cyrus is going to is gonna is gonna declare a decree of what the because the, the Lord put the spirit upon Cyrus. Give me that in Proverbs 21, verse 1. The most I put the spirit upon King Cyrus to let us go so we can go back and rebuild after the Babylonians the Babylonians destroyed our temple with the help of the white man. Proverbs 21, verse 1. Watch this. Proverbs 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. You see that thing? The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. So the king's mind, Cyrus, was in the hand of the Lord for him to, the Lord to put the spirit upon him to allow us to go back and rebuild the temple. Okay, go back to Ezra now. Ezra 1 verse 3. Ezra chapter Come on. Ezra 1 verse 3. Who is there among you of all his people 
his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. Wait. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the man of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. So what you want to notice here, you see that part when it says, and whosoever remaineth. You see that part right there? Because there were those of our forefathers that remained in Persia. That's why it says, whosoever remaineth. There are those of our forefathers that remained in Persia. Those are the ones that took the counsel among themselves to leave the, the, what, to leave the, the lands of the heathen to go to another land. That's what we, re we read in 2nd Esdras. Okay? So now, watch this. Keep going. Verse 5. Verse 5. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah, and Benjamin, and the priests, and the Levites, with all them whose spirit God had raised. Is when it says go with up... all them, hold on. When it says with all them whose spirit God has raised. So the all them is those those of our, of our northern kingdom brothers that left with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi when they went back to Jerusalem to rebuild. Not all the all northern kingdom, but some left with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Some, some of them left with us. That's why when Christ walked the earth, he went to the land of Naphtali and Zebulon. That's, that's one of them. And he met the Samaritan woman. She's from the tribe of Ephraim. You understand? And you had our sister in Luke 2, our sister Anna from the tribe of Asher. So you had Asher, uh, uh, Ephraim, you had Zebulon, Naphtali. You understand? So what we're reading here, it says, when it says, with all them, those are the all them that left with. Not the majority, but a few of them. The minimum of them, they left with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. What I'm trying to show you here, brothers and sisters, is that um, in verse 4, when it says, whosoever remaineth, we are going to read about those, whosoever remaineth. Go back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 13. Okay, verse 41 again. 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 41. Go ahead. But they took this counsel among themselves. So those that took counsel, hold on, those that took counsel among themselves is those that remained in Persia. They took counsel, while they remained in Persia, they took counsel among themselves. Go ahead. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen. Persians, right? And go forth into a further country mm -hmm. where never mankind dwelt. When never mankind dwelt, when there was nobody there before. Go ahead. That they might, they keep their statutes, mm -hmm. which they never kept in their own land. You see that thing, which they never kept in their own land. Read. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. So now you know the maps. I've done, I've gone over this before. The Euphrates River. Okay. Read. For the Most High then showed signs for them mm -hmm. and held still the flood till they were passed over. So what the Lord did, he parted the Euphrates so that they can pass over. Go ahead. Like he did when we Moses parted the Red Sea. Like Joshua parted Jordan. Same thing. Go ahead. For through that country, there was a great way to go. Mm -hmm. Namely, over a year and a half. And the same region is called Az Azareth. Azareth. So when they left Persia, they went around the continent of Africa. And he says this journey took them a year and a half. So now you've got millions of, of northern kingdom that are traveling now by ships. You understand? To go to a place where nobody has been there before. You understand? So they had to go around the continent of Africa, past Cape Town. So they would stop for supplies. Remember, they were traveling for a year and a half. So as they were traveling by these, these ships, they had to stop for supplies. You understand? Some of our forefathers, Northern Kingdom, they stopped. They, they, they didn't continue on the journey. They stopped here in the continent. 
The rest continued on. You understand? Then they entered into the Atlantic Ocean. Some went to the South, Central, and North America. So, Azareth is a biblical name for America. Okay? That's Azareth. Go ahead. Then taught they, then taught they there until the latter time. Mm -hmm. And now when they shall begin to come. He says, he says, they shall dwell there until the latter time, meaning what? Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Because right now we are in the time of the Gentiles. They are ruling over us. But when their time is fulfilled, we all going to go back home. That's what he's saying right here. You understand? So go back to Deuteronomy 33 verse 17. Now that we can understand, when he says he shall push the people to, together to the ends of the earth, not Central and South America. Manasseh and Ephraim would do that. Deuteronomy 33 verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 17. Come on. His glory is like the first ling of his bullock. Mm -hmm. And his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them, he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. So Manasseh and Ephraim would push the people together, meaning northern kingdom. When they say, when we read in, in Second Ezra, it says, they took the counsel among themselves, you understand, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, they went to the Americas. You understand? That's why when Christopher Columbus in the 1400s, when he, when he, during that time of the conquistadors, they called it the age of discovery. Because when they go to the Americas, they found, they started in the south. They went, they, they started in the south, then central, then north. And when they got to those lands, they said they discovered America. But there was people already there. How can you discover something that's already there? You understand? Now, that's another history altogether. Now, let's go back to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 8. Again. Revelation chapter 7 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Of the tribe of Zebulon was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. Go ahead. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So now, you see verse 9, this is where, the, in Christianity, this is where they confuse a lot of our people. They say, it's for everybody. You see, in Revelation chapter 7 verse 1, through eight is making reference to the leaders of the nation of Israel, the 144,000. That's the leading body of the nation of Israel. Verse nine on down is talks about everyone else, meaning regular men, women, and child. You understand that they form part of the one third because the, the 12 apostles, they are part of the 144. The 144 are part of the one third if that makes sense. So verse 9 on down is making reference, verse 9 is making reference to regular men, women, and child in Israel that form part of the one third that are going to keep God's commandments. Now, read that again, verse 9. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Mm -hmm. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, Stop right of there. all nations. Hold on. It says a great multitude which no man could number. A great multitude which no man could number. Let's deal with that first. Give me that in 2nd Ezra. Okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 38. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 38. We're going to start there. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 38. Go ahead. Arise up and stand. Behold, the number of those that are sealed in the feast of the Lord. The number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord is the 144,000. 
that's the ceiling go ahead so this is second ezra is summarizing what we just read in revelation 7 verse 4 all the way to verse 8 go ahead which are departed from the shadow of the world mm -hmm. and, and have received glorious garments of the lord glorious garments that goes into what immortality go ahead take thy number o zion you see that and shut up hold on take thy number o zion that number is the 144 take thy number o zion this is the 144 that's the number is referencing here go ahead and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white which have fulfilled the law of the lord which have what which have fulfilled the law of the lord so the ceiling in verse 38 is been clarified in verse 40 when it says which have fulfilled the law of the lord that's the seal. Go ahead. The number of thy children, whom thou longest for, is fulfilled. You see that part right there? The number of thy children, whom thou longest for, is fulfilled. Meaning the 144,000 men. Go ahead. Beseech the power of the Lord, that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. May be sanctified. Now watch this. Now, verse 42 it goes into second uh, revelation 7 verse 9 verse 42 goes into revelation 7 verse 9 verse 38 to verse 41 goes into the 144000 which is the same as revelation 7 verse 4 all the way verse 3 all the way to verse 8 go ahead verse 42 mm -hmm. i Ezra saw upon the mount zion a great people whom i could not number Wait. and they all praised the lord with songs you see that part right there? It says, I, Esdras, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number. So in Revelation 7 verse 9, go back to Revelation 7 verse 9 again. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. Mm -hmm. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. Stop right there. Of all a, hold on. A great multitude which no man could number. That's what we just read. You understand? It says, a great people whom I could not number, and they all praise the Lord with songs. That's what Revelation 7 verse 9 is talking about. This is Zion, because remember it says, I, Esdras, saw upon the Mount Zion. So when it says, a great multitude which no man could number, that's Zion. You understand? Go ahead. Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands so now let's deal with that it says this great multitude which no man could number we know according to second esdras that zion it says of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues let's deal with that give me that in deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 27 it says of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. So when it says what we're reading in, in Revelation is fulfillment of prophecy that Moses spoke about. Moses said the Lord was going to scatter us among the nations and we shall be few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord will lead us. So, guess what? So, when it says, of all nations, that's the children of Israel coming out of all these nations. You understand? Where the Lord has scattered us. Give me that in Tobit 13. Tobit chapter 13 verse 5. Let's just get to the point. Tobit chapter 13 verse 5. You know what? Read verse, three. read verse 3. Read verse 3. Toby 13 verse 3. Then we're going to jump. Toby chapter 13 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he had scattered us among them. You see what he's saying? For he had scattered us among them. So the Lord scattered us among these nations that we would be coming from, we would be coming out of. Read verse 5 now. Verse 5, and he will scourge us for our iniquities, 
and will have mercy again and will gather and will gather us out of all nations among whom he had scattered us. You see that thing? Tobit is saying the same thing. Tobit is prophesying. So now, just like Moses, he, prophet, he was prophesying. So the fulfillment of this prophecy is what we're reading. Or this prophecy is what we're reading in Revelation 7 verse 9 when it says, of all nations, because we, be, we would be coming out of all these nations. You understand? Give me that in Acts 2 verse 5. Just to prove it, prove some more this point. That is not talking about everybody because Christianity uses this verse to say everybody. No, it's not talking about everybody. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. You see that thing? Out of every nation under heaven. So that's the nations he's talking about. And guess what? In those nations, guess what we did? Read verse 6. Verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, mm -hmm. the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. You see that thing? It says every man heard them speak in his own language because as, there was coming out, as we were coming out of these nations where we were scattered, when we got to Jerusalem, the people in Jerusalem were speaking the languages of the, where we are coming out of, meaning captivity. To come for the Feast of Pentecost, like today, in South Africa, we speak English, we speak Africans, we speak Tswana, Zulu, Peri, and all of that, like that. You see that thing? So when it's, go back now to Revelation 7, so we can understand, because it says, out of all nations, we understand that part. Watch this. Because out of those nations, guess what we did? We learned the languages of those lands. Okay? Revelation 7 now, verse 9 again. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and Stop kindreds, right of all nations, we explain that because we were scattered among all nations. We're still scattered among these nations. Go ahead. Of all nations and kindred and people and tongues. Stop right there. He says of, of all nations and kindred because guess what? We, we had families in these nations, okay? And people and tongues. We were speaking different languages. We were, speak, we were speaking the languages of our captivity. That's what's going on right now. So what we're reading here is not talking about somebody else. No, it's talking about Zion. Coming out of these nations with families speaking different languages. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Isaiah. You know what? Give me Psalms 19 verse 3. I think that's what I want. Psalms 19. Psalms chapter 19, verse 3. Read that. Psalms chapter 19, verse 3. Mm -hmm. There is no speech nor language when their voice is not heard. You see that? There is no speech or language, no language where their voice is not heard. Meaning what? Out of these nations that we are scattered in, guess what? We are speaking their languages. And the Mosai will make sure that we're going to understand this Bible in the languages of our captivity. That's what's going on now. Give me Isaiah 28 verse 11. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 11. Mm -hmm. With stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? So that's the same thing that King David is saying. With stammering lips and another tongue. That's the tongues we're reading about in Revelation 7 verse 9. Will he speak to these people? So in this captivity, we, we are conquered by the Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese, so on and so forth. The Zulus, they conquered us. The Swatis, they conquered us. Okay? Yes. Because a lot of the times we don't mention them. Watch this. Um, go back to Revelation 7 verse 9. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, 
of all nations yeah. and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Wait. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. So now it says, the, so we, the, our people were saying what? We were saying salvation to our God. So at this point, this is a, this is a, not, this is, this, this is a checkmate. Salvation to our God. Who's God? Zion coming out of these nations. Salvation to our God. Give me that in Luke 168. Salvation to our God. Okay. Luke chapter 1 verse 68. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. So this goes in for the time of Christ and is also going in the second coming of the Lord. This is some heavy stuff. It says, blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Because at this point, the Lord would have visited us and redeemed us from all these nations that hate us. Deliverance. The kingdom. Okay? Go back to Revelation 7 now, verse 11. Revelation chapter 7, verse 11. Mm-hmm. And all the angels stood around. And all the angels stood round about the land, the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God. Go ahead. Say, Amen. Blessed, blessing and glory, and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor, and power, and might. Be unto our God. Forever and ever, Amen. That's some. Th listen, this is beautiful. This is beautiful right here. Go ahead. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, "What are these, which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they?" So now one of the elders is asking the question. It says, it "says One of the elders answered, saying unto me, "What are these, which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they?" Because he doesn't recognize us. Because we are coming out of these nations, we have intermingled with these nations. Now, we don't look the same way that we were when we left Egypt. We look different now. You understand? Because we were scattered among all nations on earth. And when I say all, all nations, I mean all nations. Everywhere. Wherever the nations are, Israel is over there. Israel is intermingling with the people of the land. So when we were coming out, we didn't look the same. You understand? Read. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he said to me, These are they which came out of a great tribulation. These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, because now we have to be redeemed by the blood of Christ. Watch this. It says, these are they which came out of great tribulation. So now, verse 9, obviously, it's not talking about everybody. It says, it says you, you see that part right there? It says, great tribulation. It's not it just any type of tribulation. No, great tribulation. Meaning the tribulation that the whole earth knows about. The tribulation that has not happened to any people but us. You see that thing? Give me Daniel 9 verse 11. Let me show you when it says the great tribulation. Okay? Because Daniel talked about that thing. You can read about that in Deuteronomy 28. Leviticus 26. Joel chapter 3. But let's get to... Let's go to um, Daniel 9. Okay? Daniel 9 verse 11. Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Come on. Even by departing, mm -hmm. that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses 
the servant of God, mm -hmm. because Wait. we have sinned against him. Next verse, come on. And he and he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. By doing what? By bringing upon us a great evil. By bringing upon us a great evil. Great tribulation. So the great tribulation is the great evil. Meaning the type of evil that has happened to us as a people, no nation has gone through what we've gone through. Go ahead. By bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. So the reason why you say great evil because it says upon the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. Meaning no nation has gone through what we've gone through and what we've gone through, the whole earth knows about it. That's the point. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 now, verse, 20, verse 27 again. We're going to read down. It says, these are they which come out of great tribulation. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall scatter to you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. That's part of the great tribulation. Go ahead. And they, ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Now give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So that's the same thing that Moses is saying here. Meaning what? Captivity. We would go into slavery. We would serve hard bondage. Go ahead. Go back to Deuteronomy 4 now. Verse 29 now. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29. Mm -hmm. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou shalt seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So now it says, it says but, but if from thence in the lands of our captivity, because now we were, we are delivered in the, into the lands of our captivity, serving hard bondage. You understand? During the sub-Sahara slave trade, transatlantic, Silk Road slave trade, forced migration, colonization, apartheid, Jim Crow, so on and so forth. All of which is what would happen to us as a people. Go ahead. When thou art in tribulation. When thou art in what? When thou art in tribulation. The great tribulation that John the Revelator is making reference to. When thou art in tribulation, what is that tribulation? Slavery. Being scattered among all nations, serving slavery, worshipping other gods, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Go ahead. When thou art in tribulation, all these things are, and all these things are come upon thee, mm -hmm. even in the latter days. Even in the, the what? Even in the latter days. Even in the last days. The latter days, that's the last days. That's the trans-Sahara, trans transatlantic, Silk Road, colonization, forced migration. So that's going into what? Even in the latter days. The, we as a people, we will go through these great tribulations detailed in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. Go ahead. Even in the latter days. If thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. Meaning what? We will return, we will repent as the Israelites and keep God's commandments in the faith of his son. Now let's go back. Revelation 7 now, verse 14, again. Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. Come on. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation Read. and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 12. Okay. 
Revelation 12 and verse. Let me see. Let me see. Revelation 12, verse 11. Watch this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame Satan, the white man, by what? By the blood of the Lamb, meaning the sacrifice of Christ. Go ahead. And by the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. And they love not their lives unto the death. He says they love not their lives unto the death, meaning what? We sacrifice our lives so we can what? We can give our lives to Christ. That's what he's saying. Go back. Revelation 7 now. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 15. Revelation chapter 7 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Read. That's Christ. He that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. That's Christ. Read on. They shall hunger no more. They shall what? Neither thirst. They shall hunger no more. They shall hunger no more. I want you to see something. They shall hunger no more. Go ahead. Neither thirst anymore. Neither thirst anymore. Go ahead. Neither shall the sun light on them. No any heat. Now I want to show you something. It says they shall hunger no more, neither thirst. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst. Because right now, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, you understand, we shall serve the white man. Read that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, mm -hmm. and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. You see that thing? So when it says, they shall hunger no more, no thirst. Because right now, for hunger, we go to our enemies. For thirst, we go to our enemies for that. You understand? For clothing, we go to our enemies. For want of all things, we go to our enemies. But on this day, we're not going to go to our enemies for nothing. It says they shall hunger no more. Go back to Revelation now. Chapter 7, verse 16. We shall hunger no more because the Lord will take care of us. Okay? Read that. Revelation 7, verse 16. Revelation chapter 7, verse 16. Mm-hmm. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. He says, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. You know what this is going into? Because remember, when we are in the plantations, guess what's going on? Because before they created these modern day plantations, we was in the field picking cotton. I mean, in Limpopo, I pick cotton. You understand? Guess what the sun will be? The sun will be blazing on you the whole day. You understand? So when it says, um, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat, meaning what? No more captivity. We are no longer going to be doing this nine to five garbage. It don't make no sense. You understand? So that's what this is going into. Watch this. I'll give some proof of what I'm saying. Give me the book of Song of Solomon, okay? Song of Solomon, watch this. Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Look not upon me, because I am black. Mm -hmm. Because the sun hath looked upon me. Because the what? Because the sun hath looked upon me. Because the sun hath looked upon me. Because guess what? Why is saying the sun is looked upon me? He's going to make it plain. Go ahead. My mother's children were angry with me. Because he went the hell off. Read. They made me the keeper of the, vine, of the vineyard. But mine own vineyard have I not kept. You see what he's saying? He says, they made me the keeper of the vineyard, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Meaning what? 
Right now, we are forced to keep other people's vineyards. We are forced to take care of other people's businesses. We work for them. They give us peanuts. We build in their empires by force. So that's why he is saying, they've made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Meaning what? We are not in our kingdom. We are maintaining other people's kingdom. That's why now the son is looked upon us. Get, meaning what? That's why it says, uh, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. We are no longer going to keep other people's vineyards. That's what he's saying. Go back to where he was at. Revelation 7 now. Verse 16 again. Revelation chapter 7, verse 16. Go ahead. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Mm -hmm. Neither shall the sun light on them, no any heat Read. for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into living unto living fountains of waters mm -hmm. and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes why is he saying that give me that in Ecclesiastes 4 and 1 the Lord shall wipe away all tears from our eyes this is the reason why the Lord will have to do that thing. Read that. Let me, uh, Ecclesiastes 4 and 1. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1. Come on. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. All the and oppressions. Behold. Hold on. All the oppressions that are done under the sun. Under the sun meaning what? The whole earth. Under the whole heaven. Wherever we are scattered, we are experiencing oppression. Go ahead. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. Stop right there. The tears of such as were oppressed. The tears of such as were oppressed. Read. And they had no comforter. We have no comforter. Go ahead. And on the side of the oppressors, there was mm. power. You see that thing? But the oppressors have power over us. They are forcing us to take care of their vineyards, neglecting our own. Read. But they had no comforter. But they had no comforter. So for the most like God to be able to wipe away all tears from our eyes is because of this. Because of hard bondage. Okay. Give me Lamentations. I'm almost done, but I got to get this in. Lamentations 1. Okay. Lamentations chapter 1. Lamentations chapter 1 verse 1. Watch this. Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. How did the city sit solitary that was full of people? Mm -hmm. How she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and, prin and princess among the provinces. How is she become tributary? You see what the Lord is saying? So this is talking about Jerusalem now. It says, how did the city sit solitary? that was full of people how is she become a, as a widow she that was great among the nations we was the listen we are the mightiest nation on this earth now jeremiah is complaining about this thing you understand and princes among the provinces how is she become tributary meaning what we become a prey to these nations now you understand we pay colonial tax you understand we are inferior to our rulers you understand we are being ruled in everything. We've become subjects to these nations. That's what it means. We become tributary. Now we have to, we have to be subject to them. We, have to, we, are, we are now their property in these lands. In the, all the lands where, that we are scattered. South Africa is one of those lands. Next verse. Watch this. She weep with sore in the night. You see that part right there? That's why the Lord has to wipe away all tears from our eyes. Because it says she weepeth sore in the night. Read. And her tears are on her cheeks. Her tears are on her cheeks. Read. Among all her lovers, she had none to comfort her. With that's the nations. Because they don't love us. Read. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. The nations have dealt, it, they've, they've dealt evil with us. Read. They have become her enemies. They have become her enemies. That is exactly what's going on right now. You understand? Jump down to verse 17. Watch this. 
Lamentations chapter 1 verse 17. Come on. Zion spreadeth forth her hands, mm -hmm. and there is none to comfort her. Nobody wants to help us. In captivity, nobody looked out for us. Nobody but the Lord. Read. The Lord had commanded concerning the Lord had commanded concerning Jacob that his adversaries should be round about him. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem is a menstruous woman among them. No, Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman among them. Because a menstruous woman is put away because she's unclean. So as a people, that's how the nations look at us. As a menstruous woman. As a menstruous woman, you understand? We are unclean. We are supposed to be put away. That's why they put away the that's why they push us into the ghettos. You see how we live? That's what it means when it says Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman among them. We are pushed in the ghettos. We have become like the refuse. You understand? You ever see the pick it up truck that comes to collect the garbage? That's how the nations look at us. That's why they redline us into the communities they want us to be in. And they build quote unquote malls to make it seem like they are, no, no, they are bringing civilization of some sort. No, no, they are keeping us in those ghettos. That's why they are building these malls that have, that have, uh, second grade quality food the food is not is not quality no it's very low quality food you understand we live in the ghettos we live like rats we are packed on top of each other guess what as a menstruous woman among them that's how they look at it that's why we live in the conditions that they are in, we're in because when you look at during the the time the, the apartheid you see what Ferbut was doing and his allies they had a map on how to redline so it is going to be here guess what uh alex is going to be here then Bisa is going to be here and all of that they pushed us further out of the city you understand and in those in the cities that they redline us in there's only one way in and one way out but when you look at the town planning where they stay there's multiple end entries there's multiple exits so that in the times of war they're going to be able to escape. In times of war, we're going, we going to be trampling on one another. That's why they plan that the, 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 when they do town planning, one entrance, one exit. Crafty. You understand? Let's go back. Revelation chapter 7. Okay. Revelation chapter 7, verse 16. No, verse, verse 17. Again. Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. Go ahead. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them mm -hmm. and shall lead them unto the living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This living fountains of water, watch this. That's wisdom now. All wisdom. Give me Sirach, Ecclesiasticus. Sirach chapter 1. Okay. Sirach chapter 1 and verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 5 Come on The word of God most high Is the fountain of wisdom You see that part right there The word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom Go ahead And her ways Are everlasting commandments And her ways are everlasting commandments So when it says the fountains Of, of living waters the fountains of the fountains of waters, that's the fountains of wisdom. That's the that's the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The Lord is gonna give us all that and then some. Then it says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. We're gonna have joy. Give me Revelation 21 now. Watch this. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. Come on. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Mm -hmm. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, mm -hmm. nor crying. Really? Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. The former things is the pain, the affliction, the poverty, the oppression, the depression. You understand? Every, all the atrocities that these nations are putting upon us is as those things are going to be passed away. Meaning no more, none of that stuff. We're going to be in the kingdom and we're going to rule forever. You understand? Go back to Revelation 7, verse 16 again. Verse 17 again. Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. Read. 
for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto the unto living fountains of waters and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes amen to that thing amen to that thing all praise to the most like god i'm gonna end that last right there okay let's break bread in the name of our lord and savior jesus the christ for for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of israel first corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 verse 23 for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had stopped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he come wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the lord but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.